Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Wednesday, the 22nd of December. You'd have heard this morning from Richard that we had an amazing evening last evening, carols at the outdoor crib. And there are some people that we haven't seen in two years. And we were quite a crowd and we were still able to do mulled wine and mince pies outside afterwards. So how are you doing? Almost ready? Almost ready because it's three days to go. Um, and even as we continue through the last few days of Advent, we come into this space where, where God offers us his love. Um, and, and let's pray for more of that as we go through the next few days. So evening prayer is on page 205. Our readings are Psalm 48, Isaiah 55, and 2 Peter chapter 2. So let's begin. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of light and darkness. To you be glory and praise forever. As evening falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. May your word be a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path, that we may behold your coming among us. Strengthen us in our stumbling weakness and free our tongues to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. So our psalm, it's Psalm 48, and it's on page 716. We have waited on your loving kindness, O God. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain is fair and lifted high, the joy of all the earth. On Mount Zion, the divine dwelling place, stands the city of the great king. In her palaces, God has shown himself to be a sure refuge. For behold, the kings of the earth assembled and swept forward together. They saw and were dumbfounded. Dismayed, they fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They writhed like a woman in labor, as when the east wind shatters the ships of Tarshish. As we had heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, the city of our God. God has established her forever. We have waited on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. As with your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth, your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion rejoice and the daughters of Judah be glad because of your judgments, O Lord. Walk about Zion and go round about her, count all her towers. Consider well her bulwarks, pass through her citadels, that you may tell those who come after that such is our God forever and ever. It is he that shall be our guide forevermore. We have waited on your loving kindness, O God. Let us pray. Father of lights, raise us with Christ to your eternal city, that with kings and nations we may wait in the midst of your temple and see your glory forever and ever. Let's turn to our Old Testament reading, which is taken from Isaiah chapter 55. It's on page 696. Um, how many favorite Bible passages do you have? I think this is one, one chapter in the Bible that, that I really love. Now, God has several promises here for us, just like he had to his people who were coming out of exile. And as we read this chapter, why don't, you, why don't you ask God 
by the power of his spirit to reveal to you one promise that will be your promise to hold on to. So Isaiah chapter 55. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for, for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. I'm into that. And whatever promise it is that has stirred up within you, I pray that you will see it come to pass. Let's turn to our New Testament reading, which is taken from 2 Peter chapter 2. We're reading from verse 4 to the end. Now, after that beautiful passage in Isaiah, um, I just need to say, that um, this is not an easy passage to read. It's talking about false prophets and it's talking about judgment and punishment. We're on page 234. For if God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to chains of deepest darkness to be kept until the judgment. And if he did not spare the ancient world, even though he saved Noah, a herald of righteousness with seven others when he brought a flood on a world of the ungodly. And if by turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, he condemned them to extinction and made them an example of what is coming to the ungodly. And if he rescued Lot, a righteous man, greatly distressed by the licentiousness of the lawless, for that righteous man, living among them day after day, was tormented in his righteous soul by their lawless deeds that he saw and heard. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trial and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment. Especially those who indulge their flesh in depraved lust and who despise authority. Bold and willful, they are not afraid to slander the glorious ones, whereas angels, though greater in might and power, do not bring against them a slanderous judgment from the Lord. These people, however, are like irrational animals, mere creatures of instinct, born to be caught and killed. They slander what they do not understand. And when those creatures are destroyed, they also will be destroyed, suffering the penalty for doing wrong. 
They count it a pleasure to revel in the daytime. They are blots and blemishes, reveling in their dissipation while they feast with you. They have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin. They entice unsteady souls. They have hearts trained in greed, accursed children. They have left the straight road and have gone astray, following the road of Balaam, son of Bosor, who loved the wages of doing wrong, but was rebuked for his own transgression. A speechless donkey spoke with a human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. These are waterless springs and mists driven by a storm. For them, the deepest darkness has been reserved. For they speak bombastic nonsense and with licentiousness, desires, licentious desires of the flesh. They entice people who have just escaped from those who live in error. They promise them freedom, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. For people are slaves to whatever masters them. For if after they have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overpowered. The last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than after knowing it to turn back from the holy commandment that was passed on to them. It has happened to them according to the true proverb. The dog turns back to its own vomit, and the sow is washed only to wallow in the mud. That was really harsh, wasn't it? And as God stirs up a whole lot of different things within us, why don't we, we stop now um, to worship? The song that we're going to worship with is called Eagle's Wings. Um, and it is God who can lift us up, lift us up out of the mire, out of the pit. So let's take this time to offer ourselves back to God, to ask God to deal with um, all the things that, um, that we need to set aside, but to ask God to reveal, to continue to reveal his promises to us as we, as we sing and as we are lifted up on eagle's wings.
So let's join in the, the Magnificat, which is on page 210. O King of the nations and their desire, the cornerstone, making both one. Come and save the human race, which you fashioned from clay. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. O King of the nations and their desire, the cornerstone making both one, come and save the human race, which you fashioned from clay. So let's turn to a time of prayer and intercession. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a God who has journeyed with your people from the start of time. Whether they were in the land flowing with milk and honey, whether they were walking according to your way, or even when they found themselves in, in captivity in Egypt, in exile in Babylon. And Father, we have read today of those beautiful promises that, that you gave them even as they came out of exile. Father, thank you that you are the same God who journeys with us today. Father, whether we find ourselves in a place of plenty or in a place of wilderness, we thank you that we can hold on to you. And Father, we thank you for this reminder in the fourth week of Advent that you have come to pour out your love into our hearts and our lives. So, so let's just take a moment now to receive his love, to receive and hold on to his promise. And Father, we want to pray those promises over the world. Father, you have invited all those who are thirsty to come and buy wine and milk without cost. So Father, we, um, we remember places in the world that need, that long for, that ache for, that wine and milk that place of peace and rest. And Father, we pray that your bounty will be available to them, Father, in the midst of their anguish. So Father, we remember Ethiopia. We remember Afghanistan, Yemen, South Sudan, the Philippines, and every other nation, oh Father, that is going through turmoil in one sense or the other. Father, we continue to pray for our nation and we continue to pray for, um, for families and individuals and, and communities of oh Father that continue to be affected by um, the impact of this pandemic. Father, as people try to make decisions about what to do over Christmas. We ask for wisdom. And most of all, oh Father, we ask for love. Father, we thank you for the love that we continue to experience in our community. And Father, we thank you for so many people who came out last evening as we, as we sang with the band 
Father, as our spirits were lifted up. Father, for people who have been able to come and join in with, with something here at church um, after a couple of years. Father, we pray that that spirit will linger with each one of them. Father, we thank you that, that your love, that your Holy Spirit is indiscriminate. And Father, we pray that your love will abound in our community. Father, we continue to ask for your peace, your protection, your provision upon those who are struggling more at this time than any other. Father, for those for whom it feels like a blue Christmas, as they miss loved ones who have gone before. Father, for those who continue to, to long for um, time with loved ones. Father, for those who feel um, alone and isolated. And Father, we want to pray for those who are unwell. Why don't you take the time to name a couple of people before God now? We've been praying for so many people as a community. Let's pray for a couple of people now. And Father, we, we bring to you our families and our loved ones and all the plans that we have, Father, over this period. Father, we pray that you will bless. And Father, in a special way, we commit our services to you. Our Christingle and Crib service, Midnight Mass, Christmas morning celebration. Father, we pray for all those who come into the building and all those who join in from home that the peace of the Christ child, that the love of God, Father, will fill, fill the space in which we worship. Thank you, Father, for being with us. Hear our prayer, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our collect for this evening. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. So may the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And as we go out into the rest of this evening, I just want to read one of those promises from Isaiah 55. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. God bless you. <laughs>